Hi, hello, this is Julie Bling of JulieBling.com and I have a project to share with you today that I saw on Pinterest and I saw the project posted by Vicki Boucher and she mentioned that Patty Bennett originated this um, fun fold layout and they both on their um, blogs they have um, completely different, like a spring floral, um, just a different design. And I really wanted to use this elegant new paper. Let me get the name of that. This paper here, it is Specialty Love You Always DSP. And it comes in three different patterns and they all have metallic foil on them and I will show you the other one that will be the card that we make so there is a sand pattern blushing bride and the last one is Rococo Rose so look how nice this is so it perfectly stands up I know it's a little bit hard to see from that angle and then I put papers on the back just um, so you could write a message if you want. And this, <laughs> it came out so good, so cute. I love how the back of this turned out. This was the second card that I made. This was the first one, thinking everyone needs at least one anniversary. But if you celebrate your parents' anniversary or your kids' anniversary, you might need more than one. But it could be a good wedding, too. Happy anniversary. Um, did nothing on the sides. Put a little silver heart right here and then on the back decorated it a bit this is a little bit simpler this is the first one i did that's heat embossing but then i went crazy and did this one so the one that we're going to do today will probably be somewhere in between um not that this is hard but um just so that when you get the box you don't feel overwhelmed so here are the samples and I'm doing things just a little bit different today. I had the pleasure of chatting with um, Canada Chris, lovely lady. And she's like, okay, tell me about the traveling box. So, basics, samples. Oh, this is traveling box right here. Let me show it to you from the side. Well, I can't, I can't tip it. But it's just, um, just a plain old box and I have all the supplies to make the two sample cards plus the one we're gonna do, everything is in here. Also with this box is, this is um, Simply Scored, and we'll use that today. So, with that, everything in here will probably, with the exception of the black embossing powder, everything will need to come out to be used. So, as I pull it out, I'll show you what I've got in here. I've got four ink pads, Sahara Sand, Rococo Rose, and Blushing Bride, and then also Versamark. Blue dots, a tray with dyes. Oh, and I have something to mention about this die. Well, you know what, while I'm thinking about it, I'll show you. This die, oh, you could see it good against the black um, project box. This die is one big die. So, when I went to do all these little pieces down here, I took all three of these papers, lined them up on the big shop platform, and had them right next to each other, set this down, and I didn't want it to shift because I had all three of these pieces up there. So I used washi tape to stick it to the um, cutting plate and ran it all through. When it got cut through, these little pieces right here were completely off of the cutting pad. This was separate and I thought, what am I going to do with that? That kind of messed up my papers. But, put a little bit of a gap, it turned out adorable. And now I have a million little white hearts floating around. And these little dots, yeah, you have to punch them out of here, but they're so cute. So then I went to stamp it and I stamped on just the top part. It came out great. I love how that came out. Just FYI. Um, little hearts. So these are the silver foil ones. Those are sparkly pink ones. And in here is 
silver foil. Oh, one of them. This one here is champagne foil. So if you cut out and you have extra, just put them in here. Or if there's a lot in here, you don't need to use them or cut them. You could use these. This is paper for the banner. Here's the die. And it fits on here just fine. But if you run out, this paper right here, it's a little bit of a squeeze, this long paper, but it fits fine too. So we're going to need all these things. Here's blocks. These are all the different size blocks I used for this project. The dies, we are using Floral Heart dies. They're brand new in the catalog. Here's the stamp set, Always in My Heart. Very nice stamp set. I made a template for scoring, which we'll use in just a minute. This paper box for the one we're going to do today is a little bit overflowing, but when we make today's card, it'll be less overflowing. So I have the cut papers. We'll get into this in just a minute. This is the paper box for this one. And all the pieces are perfectly counted out. So if you can, try to avoid interchanging this with that color or with this with the gray because they're all perfectly counted out here and base paper. And finally, the anniversary wedding card. And again, those are ready to go, all counted out. And now we have an empty box. Okay, so let's get started on making the Rococo Rose sample. So in here, I will take one of these. I'm gonna take it from the middle, just because when you take it from the top, I'm fighting with the rubber band. And so this project, I plan on using white to back up the designer paper. For instance, this one, the Blushing Bright designer paper, I used crumb cake. This one, the sandpaper, I used um, smoky slate. This one, we're going to do white, so you have to take more of these pieces. But if you just follow the little stickies, no problem. Okay, so I'm going to use all of these pieces. Here is a champagne foil paper. It's four by four. When you go to cut the die, it's a little bit close, but because it's so fancy, even if you do cut off the bottom, this one I think will be just fine. Um, it's so fancy you don't, did you notice? You probably didn't notice. Okay, so we'll cut that out. I'm going to use that one. Two per card of this. One, two. Okay. I'll... Four per card of this one. One, two, three, four. Oh, no, no, no. Roomba, don't go. Yeah, she has lots of pieces to clean up in here. One, two, three, four. Okay. It's kind of a mess now. I don't want to bend them. Okay, I'll do that in just a minute. Well, it's going to drive me crazy. Are you like that? Got to do it right. Okay, those, this one two per card, one, two, and believe it or not, this is an easy project. It looks fancy, oh, no sticky on this, so one per card. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three. Oh, yeah, looks good. Okay, so let's start out by die cutting this. Okay. 
and this extra piece right here I used this die to cut some hearts I probably won't need that many I could cut more but this just cuts out some parts or you could do this one I still might do that on the back because that one turned out so cute it's a lot more work though not really I'll, sh I'll show you okay so this is garbage I'm not going to cut out anymore this I could cut out more hearts but I think I have enough and I have to punch out some little pieces Okay, so let's get to scoring. Thank you, Vicki. Thank you, Patty. Well, I'm going to take one of these for a banner. And I just need to score my base paper. That one I'm going to keep separate because I have a lot of different sizes going on here. Different widths of the white paper. Okay. Can you see the top of that? There, now you can see the top of it. Okay, and I'm just going to lay this down here. Use my score tool that comes with this. I'm going to score it at two inches. Three and an eighth. Five and three eighths and six and a half. So I leave the score template right here just so that you can confirm, yes, those are where my scores are. And if you happen to go down the wrong groove, um, when you use your bone folder to fold it, just make sure that you choose the right groove and your wrong groove score will easily be overlooked. Okay, we're done with that. So I'm going to fold my paper and just think you want this part popping up. This part popping up. Okay, and flip it over. And here's your bone folder. Get those scores real nice. Okay, that's all the scoring we have. So now this is for my banner. And I'm just going to set this on top because I know that this paper width is different than these and I would easily get confused. So now all these pieces, they're very pretty. But let's see what I have in the widths. So these papers, there should be two different widths. One is a little bit wider for the top, and the two side panels are a little bit more narrow. So I'll take this, it's going to go here. This extra one is going to be for the back. Those will go here. This will go here, and these will go here. And when you look at the paper, I just try to choose which side has most of the flowers pointing upward. But it's a random paper, so in the middle are two of them pointing down. My heart will cover that. And I don't think it matters too much anyhow. Okay, so I'm going to attach these pieces. And this designer paper, interesting is printed on only one side. Stampin' Up! has always done it on both sides. And I'm fine with it just one side because it's so pretty. I know I'll be using this. And it's a little bit thinner, and I kind of like that too.
So today Mama and I were going out, we're going to make a few rounds, rotating travel boxes. That's always fun. She's so cute. She's like, well, when when are we going when are we gonna do rounds again? I like doing that. Because we always stop and get a coffee. Sometimes get a treat. And then we just go make the rounds. And she loves it when the girls come out and say, Hi, how are you? It's just a social thing. She brings her tablet. So if I'm in someone's house too long, she pulls out her tablet. It just it's it's really cute. It's very special. Sometimes we do errands. Like around Christmas time we had shopping to do. Today I think it's just going to be travel boxes <clears throat> and girlfriends. So what do you think about the new holiday catalog? Or not holiday, but the mini all-occasion spring-summer catalog. It's so big. I want so much stuff. I think I've bought so much stuff already. Okay, look at us. The front is almost done. The front, other than the heart. I would stick these pieces on, but I want to stamp on them first. Okay, so... Probably should have had this done before. I could use my dye brush, I guess. But they're punching out pretty easy. This foil paper is so pretty. You know, this pattern in particular, I was thinking what color would be good to mix with it, and I tried um, rich Razzleberry, Blackberry Bliss was way too dark. Um, because I was trying to match the color of the foil paper in there. I didn't want to do black. This is for Valentine's or wedding or something. Black would have been elegant. Um, so just plain white. Let the paper shine. All the other papers, they kind of conflicted with the... Um, the foiling of, foiling has a few me meanings. Um, the designer paper, they conflicted with the color, so it didn't work. White works. Neutrals work. So this stamp set, see those little flowers? Those all, there's dies to go with them, right here, and you can stamp or just die cut. And those little flowers lay right on top of these flowers here. So when you look in the catalog, you'll see how they um, did the big hard die cut in green. It was probably pear, it's a lighter green, maybe olive. And then on top of that, they laid colored um, flowers from using the die cut. Really cute. See, that would be a spring completely different direction to go with this project. This is more foil and elegant and monochromatic. Oh, some of the new papers, so pretty. The um, free celebration papers are very pretty. That's what the girls who originally did this project, that's what they used. Okay, it looks like all punched out. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so this piece is going to go here. This piece just popped out of here, and I'm going to put it right back. On this one, in white paper, in the box is a piece of square white paper. I stamped, you had me at hello. This one I was thinking would be good for a husband. I mean, it's simply Valentine's Day pink. Can't get away from it. 
or girl, girlfriend. This one, anniversary, wedding, definitely good for both of those. This one I want for girls. So I'm going to leave the foil heart here. I want to do a banner. Oh, okay, okay. So the banner. Here's the, here's the banner. I'm going to leave my little pieces there. Ready for the banner. The words, read this. The best kind of friend is a friend like you. Okay. It's a polymer stamp. You know where I'm going with this? I made the polymer curvy. So, is it still curvy? It doesn't have to be super curvy. Just a little bit of a curve. Okay. So, that is going to stamp. I think I'm going to stamp it first and then I'll cut it out. And I will stamp it in, how about Rose? Rococo Rose. Here we are. And looking at this, it's going to go right about in the middle. Maybe with this side up a little bit. Perfect. Now to cut it out. So when you go to cut it out, they'll be stitched on the inside, inside layer here, and then right in the middle of the metal of the die is the cutting area. So when you lay this on top, don't worry if these edges go over the edge of your paper because the cutting is right in the middle. And I'm going to adjust this based on my words right about there. Gonna get a little washi tape to hold it in place. Um, when you use washi tape, that's great, but try to have it just on your die and on the paper part you're gonna throw away because sometimes it's been so sticky that it pulls up the top layer of paper and kind of ruins things. Don't wanna do that. Okay, so it looks like it's gonna kind of chop off the top part of the phrase but I know that it's going to cut in the middle of the, the die. That, that, and this. So as you see the video the other day, um, I tried the gold foiling. Well, that was fun. I need to do more with that. Because I did that one on just a few cards, paper pumpkin. It won't be a traveling box. Something will be. Okay, so there we go. Stuff all over the place. Okay, came out good. I preserved the U. The tea is just fine. Okay, so this die is a little fancy because I feel like, well, that doesn't look very smooth. That's because they're score lines that make it banner-like. Stamping up your fancy. So, look at this one. Doesn't it look banner-like? And see how it pops up? Okay, so that is going to stick on. It'll be This one I'm going to do just flat, straight. Yeah, okay, maybe. I was going to say flat, but then the words don't look. What do you think? Back to what I know. It'll go like that. 
Okay, so to attach the heart, I'm going to use some liquid glue. And I'm going to put glue just in the middle of the heart. I'll do it like this so you could see. Um, on the first card I did, I did it out to here, and that part is floating. So it doesn't take much to hold it in place. So I'll do it on this sleeve, maybe a little bit here, maybe a little bit on these, right here. Okay. And that will go right in the middle. And now you know why I didn't put lots of glue on the outside edge. And I'm looking at this point this point and then how much solid colored cardstock I have showing that will help me line it up. So I'm just going to let this sit for just a minute, let the glue start to stick and then I'll really push it down here in just a minute. And this heart is going to go on dimensionals. We'll go right in the middle. Okay. Let's see about getting this to stick. Okay, so to attach the banner, Sticking too good. To attach the banner, I'll have it go right about there. So I'm going to lift up the banner, and um, on these two I used liquid glue, but on the sparkly paper it wasn't holding, so I used glue dots. This one, the liquid glue worked really well on the foil. Let me try that first. If not, there's glue dots in the box. So I'm going to put a thin layer of liquid glue here, thin layer here, oh the tiny hearts, you could do them out of sparkly paper too. Very cute. Okay, so now I will put this right there. And I don't want to move it after I have it on, otherwise my um, glue will get on the foil and it will kind of dull the foil. Don't want dull foil. Okay, so I'm going to let this just sit for just a little bit and then I'll go back once the glue is a little bit more tacky and just confirm um, that it's adhered. Okay, so for the back here are my papers. What am I going to do? The best kind of friend is a friend like you. Happily ever after. That's more for um, anniversary. You are always in my heart. Is that too smushy for a girlfriend? You know what? This one I'm going to do. None of these words. Be my Valentine's. That's too smushy. I'm going to do just the flowers because look how cute this one came out. Okay, I don't think I'm going to do this part. How about how about this little one on the bottom? That's something different. So that could go right here. Yeah, that's cute. Okay. So, oh, so notice these are different sizes. This one is a little bit wider, and the two side panels are a little bit more narrow. Could have 
that right along the bottom edge and no matter what I do I'm going to cut off parts Those are huge. Okay, so that one is done. What do you think? I don't like how it cut off parts. Maybe on these pieces it'll be the perfect size. Nah, that one's close to being perfect size. And I'm having the die cut perfectly aligned with the bottom of the paper just so that my hearts are all consistent. So, if I'm smart, I don't need to run the whole thing through just until the pressure ooh, is gone. Wow. Okay, and then back. Because if my die, if my cutting plate is real messy, like usually they are, it would leave some pattern in here. I don't want that. Oh, I didn't cut them all off perfectly. It's still cute. Oh, maybe I could leave this on. For the last one. Am I fancy? If it works, I'm fancy. If it doesn't work, it's not good. It worked. Alrighty. <clears throat> so, done with this. So, to do the stamping, let me check what patterns are in this designer paper. So, these flowers kind of the pointy leaves, these rounded circle type leaves. Let me see how this is sticking. Little glue pop through there. Looks like it's hanging on though. Okay, dry a little bit more. Okay, so to put these in order, if ever your cutting plates leave behind little shards, Get your adhesive remover and it'll clean them right up. Okay, so flower one, flower two, leaf, leaf, flower three. I want it all. So I'm going to do the leaves in the sand just because the sand somewhat matches the copper foil but I'll start with the flowers okay so if I have these three stamp pads how about this flower that flower 
Here's a leaf. Another leaf. Hearts. Hearts could go here. Flower. Flower. I'm just doing them really random. I don't I don't really even know what's on these stamps yet. So I'm going to start out with flowers. So I'm going to do the outline in Rococo Rose. Then the no coloring required stamp it fill it in. Stamp off, color, look how cute. I don't know why this one is just bringing me joy. Tickled, thrilled with it. I'm gonna hold this up here really close. All you pro stampers, you're like, I know what it looks like, but look how cute is that? Wow. Okay, so the hearts, going to do the same thing. Maybe I'll have the hearts like they're coming out because I'm not putting a verse on this one, a phrase. They'll just come from here and you can write over them. Then to fill it in, stamp off. Oop, a little bit off. Oh, turned out fine. Who knew? Oh my gosh, this is so cute. Okay, all of you that I'm swapping with, guess what? This is going to be a swap card. I'm going to mail it to Carolyn before the 20th. Just because I'm so tickled and thrilled with it. So this project is mostly Rococo Rose. But because of the champagne, I'm going to do a little bit of Blushing Bride. So I have two flowers here. Okay, I don't know how this stamp off is going to be. Haven't tried it. That is so dainty and feminine. And I think these flowers, just like that, I could use these die cuts and then they would perfectly fit onto here. Well, maybe underneath because that detail, I don't want to cover that up. <gasps> okay, I'm going to have to play with this more. Not now. This could be a spring card. Okay, two different flowers. I have another one going here. Ooh, that one's kind of fancy. And the rest of them are leaves, so I have to leave room for leaves. Maybe I'll do a bunch of them here. It's like the, what flower? Hydrangeas? They come kind of in bunches. Okay, I'm just getting carried away with these flowers because they're so cute. Okay, that one doesn't have so much. Okay. Now, to line this up, Oh, that's not hard. Oh, stamp off. Don't forget to stamp off. If ever you mess up and you don't stamp off, get a piece of that scratch paper, that little baggie of scratch paper, stamp it on there, cut it out, and put it over the top. Not that I've done that before a million times.
Why well, haven't even put the leaves in here yet? It's going to look so good. <gasps> look at those. Cute, huh? Especially when they're all together. Okay, so now is leaves in Sahara sand. That one's a little one. This one's bigger. I'll do this one first. Well, I don't know. How about there? Oh. Here. Okay, and then to do the detail, stamp off. Oh, this one's a lot easier to line up. And I'll take pictures of all these and put them on my blog um, after I get this done. So if you really want to see what they look like, the pictures will show. I'll hold it up. But it's worth looking at, like really looking at, because it's turning out cute. So I didn't get a good inked image right there, but when I fill it in, um, it will be just fine. Oh, I didn't do it there either. It's got to be operator error. Yeah, I'm going to have a lot of two-step stamping to do here. Okay, enough. So now the detail, or the fill-in, the no coloring requiring. Well, this one's easy to line up, too. So at first when I tried this two-step stamping, I thought, well, I'll do Rococo Rose for the outline and um, Blushing Bride for the fill-in, and it worked okay. The stamps performed as they should, but it didn't look as good as this, the stamp off. To me, it just looks better. almost done so if I didn't do all of this <laughs> stamping on the back which I don't know if you could tell I'm being indulgent right now the card does not take long at all okay <gasps> is that nice wait till I put it all together oh and these little hearts okay how is this thing doing that if it doesn't stick I'll just put a glue dot under there because it looks like it's lifting a little bit it's lifting don't like that glue dot so if you choose to use glue dots which is fine look for a place that you could put the glue dot for instance on the back of this larger leaf because if I put it right here when you have the card folded the banner glue dot is going to stick to that so first of all I'm going to roll it up and make it small then how about a glue dot right up in here yeah that's not sticking and I rolled it up so it's small. So right now when I touch it, it's not tacky. 
This side is hanging on fine, but that's probably because it has all that real estate to work with. Okay, so the front is now done. Very cute. The best kind of a friend is kind like you. Very sweet. And, okay, the front is stunning. The back, I'm, I'm liking it. So we have two smaller panels and one bigger panel. So this project box can be for anniversary, or wedding, or Valentine's, but I've already done a lot of Valentine's this year. You would think that I am a person all into Valentine's. I like it and all, but probably not enough to say I will be doing three boxes. But this one is just the product is so nice, I had to do something. So think of it more of a wedding anniversary. It could be a wedding anniversary project box. So I'm putting just a hint of glue down at the bottom. You could skip that part if you want. This one goes, make sure it's right side up, right in the middle. This side. I don't know if it matters what side. I kind of had them all, the flowers at the bottom, going toward the center. Okay, that's really cute. Look at that. Can I be proud of me? I think it's more proud of Stampin' Up! for making such great product you can't mess up on. Oh my gosh, which one do you like better? I like this glimmery heart, which was popped out of here. I kind of like this bar along the bottom. But this one is a little bit calmer. It isn't quite as sparkly as that one. Okay, let's look at the front. That's nice. <sighs> okay. Well, that's it for today. I hope you like the project. And again, thank you to Vicki and Patty for sharing your creativity. Um, and give me a thumbs up if you like the video. And until next time, have a great day. Bye.